This backrooms entity is easily one of the most horrific ones that I'll ever go over on this channel. There's no way I can do a proper introduction for it, so let's just get into the explanation of Entity 204, shall we? Listen, okay? The Brugly U2's plush is out, officially. He's available from right now as you're watching the video until October the 20th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you wanna be a part of history, literally, Backrooms history, grab a plush, it'll be in the pinned comment and in the description. These are selling out like hotcakes right now. Grab one while you can. I'm, I'm so grateful. I, there's nothing else to say. Thank you so much for allowing me to get here. Y'all are the best fans, seriously. I cannot believe that I have a freaking doll. What? Bye. Entity 204, or as they've been nicknamed, Tagalongs, are humanoid parasite type entities that look so vaguely like people in their main form, just slightly different. These entities exhibit a parasitic relationship with a human host and they look very unnatural and like they're these disturbing growths off the side of human bodies. Yes, you heard that right. A nasty, uncanny parasite that grows on the side of wanderers. But wait. It gets worse, I promise. Physical description. Tagalongs, when they aren't actively being a parasite on a human, take the vague appearance and aura of a human. And if you don't closely inspect them, you might just think they're a random wanderer. They have this ever so slightly uncanny vibe to them, where if you look just long enough, you'll get the feeling that something's wrong. But if you just quickly glance over, you won't be able to notice. But by that point, it's too late, probably. The way a tagalong makes themselves appear depends on who their last host was. So if one of these entities attached itself to this guy, it would end up looking like this guy when it detaches itself later. I'm gonna go over the entire system on how that works later, don't worry, but, but for now, I'm gonna explain the rest of the description. The cracks in this false identity appear because it doesn't seem that the entity maintains their old host's intelligence, personality, or even memory. So if you knew the old host and you're trying to talk to this new tagalong that looks like the host, you'll realize it's not them. So how does a tagalong work? How does it take the appearance of a human? How does it grow? How does it multiply? I'm gonna answer all that right now. Strap in. So tagalongs are normally found lurking near and around human settlements inside of the back rooms. So like a base or something. The entity can survive without food or without water for long periods of time, and they can also survive independently from a host for a while as well. They will eat if you offer it to them, almost as if they're trying to do it to blend in with other people and make it seem like they're a real person. Like, hey guys, I'm, I'm human too. Watch me eat this sandwich. People who have seen a tagalong eat say it's gross and nasty because they're strange and they have these really unnatural movements in their face and jaw. Pretty much the base appearance of a tagalong is a vague humanoid until they find a host to pair with. Once these entities pair with a host through a process I'm about to explain, they will then take on that host's appearance and then through an unknown process after that, they will take all the host's life force and pretty much just leave them as an empty husk, and they themselves will go on and multiply even more. They will separate from that host and become an uncanny resemblance of what the host looked like, leaving the original host behind in the dust. The infection method. So tagalongs propagate, or spread, through an infection process. This happens when a wanderer is lulled into a false sense of security and safety by the entity. It does this somehow by making the wanderer think that it's a friend or a family member from real life. So using some method that we don't understand, it tricks a future victim into thinking that they're real and they're somebody from that person's life. During this time of tricking and lulling the wanderer, the tagalong entity will stay as close as it can to that person physically. Most of the time, it'll maintain constant physical touch with hands or sides or their heads touching or something. They try to get literally as close as possible. And during this initial infection period, the tagalong will seem to befriend the wanderer and they won't be able to tell that it's attaching itself to them because they're distracted by this new companion, this new friend, this person they're supposed to recognize from real life. When the wanderer sleeps, the entity will stay up all night to protect that person from threats. So no one else can have it except the tagalong. Also a side note, tagalongs don't seemingly need to sleep. 
which I find interesting. They, they don't have to sleep at all. Anyways, over time, the individual that's being infected will start to get really bad headaches and hearing loss and sight loss, and they'll become completely unaware of what's happening around them. In some cases, it said the victims might feel like they're back in reality, like they're they're normal, they're fine. But this is only after being infected with the tag along for so long. Now, after around a week of this infection going on, the victim will lose the ability to walk and will stop responding to any stimulus. You can poke them, slap them, they won't respond. Then the tag along will fully merge itself and meld itself to the victim, sticking itself into a gross conglomeration on the side of that person. The tag along will fully merge itself and then morph another copy of that person out, leaving a second tag along, like a reproduction method kind of. After this, the two tag alongs will then detach from one another, leaving the original host body husk laying there on the ground, gone. Yes, you heard all that right. It will stick onto someone, stay there for so long that it becomes them. Then it'll pop into their body, pop out another tag along entity, like reproduce it. And then they'll both split from that body, leaving the host on the ground. Cool, you know, that's, that's, that's totally normal. That's a great thing to have, a great entity to worry about, you know what I'm saying? In another gross twist of fate, when tagalongs have been dissected and investigated and kind of looked into, they are filled up entirely with thick, clotted blood. They have no organs, no veins, no capillaries, no heart, none of that, or any internal workings, but somehow they appear to be semi-normal on the outside. As of this video, we have no idea how that happens. I mean, I don't know how something can function without a brain or a heart, but it's utterly terrifying to think about, so let's just move on. In order to survive a potential encounter with a tag-along, you need to first not trust any human that you don't fully recognize. So if you see somebody you've never seen before and they kind of look off, kind of act off, don't trust them. They might be a tag along trying to impersonate a human. And definitely don't trust people that you think you've seen from real life. Like that's probably not a real person. That's probably a tag along. Also keep a close eye on everyone that you encounter. And finally, go by the saying, if in doubt, get out. Because your intuition and you thinking somebody's messed up or wrong, it might save you from being a parasite's dinner. I know it sounds pretty entertaining and unfun to be a parasite's husk, but uh, I, I don't think it will be. I, I don't think so. So yeah, that was the Tagalong Entity, a parasitic humanoid that will attach itself to a unknowing wanderer and then duplicate itself, leaving the wanderer not alive. Hope you enjoyed. That's pretty fun. I love entities like this. The weird, uncanny, disturbing vibe. I love it all. It's just really well done, I think. Go check out the full article below if you want more. Let me know your thoughts on the entity as well. And you know what? While you're down there, check out Spoogly and Toogly, my second and third channel, if you want more content from me. Love and appreciate y'all, and I will see you later. Once again, I know I keep saying it, check out the plush. If you want one, grab one. If you don't, you don't have to. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. If you are still watching, I want you to comment just Brugly plush, because that way I know that you're, you're actually a real one and you're watching at the very end of the video. Also, leave a like if you think this entity was terrifying, because I genuinely think it's one of the scariest concepts I've ever gone over. Hopefully you do too. Peace!